Oh, it's John Webb, Scotch Sci-Fi.co.uk, Scotch Sci-Fi.com, you can follow me on Twitter, DVD, Facebook, and Facebook, Instagram, all that social media. Just click like and subscribe or go away. <laughs> anyway, hello. All right, lockdown week for three. Okay, just done the lockdown whiskey. We're on to just something for the hell of it now. Okay, so this is some uh, Glenmarie sent me, which is very nice. Um, I do actually have a bowl after I tasted it. Um, uh, because I've tried this on multiple occasions now. Um, nearly lost it. Um, so, that's what I was saying. It's Glen Moray, 21 year old Portwood finish. Uh, it's a bit dust forward in front of the screen. Uh, bottled at 46, 46.3%, 46.3% ABV. Um, this is their new 21 year old so this is this is um a reasonably recent release this was released in the last year as one of the ones that uh uh graham created forgot his last name that's terrible that's gonna annoy me um so there's a wee little sample bottle thing yeah so glenn murray uh 21 year old portwood finish um uh, and let's where's put the glasses um and let's see what it's like <laughs> I already know what it's like because I tried it. I've tried it. It's quite nice. Um, and I'm not just saying that. I have literally bought a bottle. This would be one of the bottles I would actually open as a as a lockdown bottle. Um, but I got samples, so it's kind of silly just to open a bottle. Um, like that. <sighs> right, I'm a sucker for port whiskey. Uh, port matured whiskey. Absolute sucker for it. Love the stuff. Um, as long as it's not too porty or too strong or too nasty or too young to begin with. Um, as long as it's just right, like any whiskey really, but particularly port whiskey, port matured whiskies, I do generally find I gravitate towards. Cheers. Stay at home. Slangeva, stay at home. Okay. This probably actually needs a bit of time in the glass. In all fairness, it's 21 year old, I've just poured it. Bit silly. Should have poured it. Should have done all that beforehand. Not thinking ahead as usual. Uh, let me tell you a bit more about it. So, um, well, Glen Murray for a start. They're in Elgin, uh, up north Scotland. Um, lovely people. Um, really got a lot of time for Glen Murray, So, um, and their whiskey's really good as well. Really good value for money a lot of the time. I think this one's on the expensive side, but we'll get into that. <laughs> but but there you go. I, it, for time for time and tide and the way things are, it's it's actually at the right price. Um, so uh, retails at one hundred and twenty, I believe, a bottle um, for the twenty-one year old. Uh, they previously had a twenty-five year old Portwood finish uh, for many years, and I think they had three or four batches of that had come out over the over that period of time that they were uh, producing that particular one. Um, and that was a favourite of mine. It is one that I've got a bottle or two of. I've even got a box up there of it where I did a bottle share a few years back. I've actually got batches of it in bottle share, so I've got, um, yeah, too much cricket whiskey as usual. Um, but there you go. Uh, anyway, so back to this one. But uh, yeah, so the 25, I'm not sure if the 25 is still done and this one replaced it. The 25 year old, interestingly enough, now is retailing about 150, 170, I think, and that is at 43%. ABV. This is the slightly higher ABV. I want to say, I want to say it's natural colour and I want to say it's non-chill filtered. It's non-chill filtered, says it on the label. I want to say it's natural colour because I don't think it's on the, um, on the label or on the bottle or on the box, but I'm pretty sure it is. A lot of theirs is actually not got any colouring added and it's only a few of their expressions only literally two or three that actually have colouring added and it's usually uh, added for international markets don't know how I know that but I do and it's true but a lot of the time they actually haven't got colour in it anyway back to this so on the nose fruity um, very much so so lots of red berries Lots of vanilla. You can tell it's a finish as opposed to anything else. Definitely spent a decent amount of time in bourbon because it's got that bourbon creaminess. It's got that vanilla creaminess, the, the, the butteriness, you know, of an older 
kind of longer matured bourbon whiskey but then it's got this fruity layer on top like a like jam over a, over a custard cream if you like jam on a custard cream or like a happy face are they called happy face those biscuits they got vanilla cream in them and I'm not, I want biscuits now. Anyway, um, so yeah, back to it. Definitely, uh, the, the more time in the glass, the more of those berry notes come forward. It's definitely more like strawberry and red currant and definitely raspberry as well. It's like proper jammy, jammy. Mm. This is very good. This is very good. <laughs> yeah, okay. I take my previous statement about it being on the expensive side back because that is really, really good. Really good. The palette doesn't match the nose. The nose is actually quite subdued compared to the palate. The palate has so much bloody flavour going on. It is a proper jam bomb. It's a jam bomb in the gob. Even now, like, the nose has got, it's got the subtle, it's subtle. The nose is subtle like you, you'd expect an old fine whiskey to be. It's really subtle and gentle and then you take a sip and it's like, Phew. It really is like that. <laughs> With a bit more bass. Um. <laughs> mm, all right. Shuffle. a beautiful balance in there of spice and fruit it's that it's really quiet starting you get your vanillas you get your you know your traditional whiskey type flavors build up and then you get this bombardment this absolute burst of jammy fruit flavors and spice spices are dry there's a bit of pepper a bit of cinnamon a whole hell of a lot of fruit lots of just buried fruit it's just forest fruits galore blowing up in the gob it's really nice i'm not adding water i was gonna add water because i thought that might help but I'm, i don't want to um all right i will i'm not adding much Mm. Man, that second wave, second wave, massive amounts of fruit, and the mouth coating. The, the forty-six point three percent is really showing. It. It's really coating, and it's just an absolute bombardment of flavour. It really is. It's fantastic, and then it goes into a a long finish of just fruit and vanilla. It's proper jam tart, jam tart with custard, man, without the tart part. I don't know, which is the tart part? If the tart part is the pastry, then it's without the pastry and it's just the jammy tart, the jammy bit in the middle. With lots of, um, lots of uh, custard. It's really good. Um, fantastic. The, the first <laughs> I had two samples of this um for one reason or another and the first sample just went sat there in the night it was just oh my god I was so happy it's just um bought a bottle no brainer no brainer and then 20 quid ah! but for what you're getting after what I've said about 
McCrallan, uh, McCrallan, <laughs> McCrallan, um, classic cut and all that. If that's worth the money, this is this is worth more than 120. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is definitely worth the money. You've got to like your porty whiskies, though. You've got to like that kind of all the red flavor, all the red flavors, all the red fruit kind of jamminess in a whiskey. If you if you turned off by port whiskies, forget about it. Just forget about it. But if you like your porty whiskey, this is quintessential porty whiskey stuff. It's not over the top port. It's really well balanced. It's it's just complementary and it fits really well. And bugger me, it's lovely and its delivery is particularly particularly good. Right, bit of water added. Cutting through the initial jamminess a bit on the nose. It's a little bit more bourbon, a little bit more straight, straight whiskey, a kind of whiskey whiskey as opposed to different whiskey. Does that make sense? That makes sense, does it? It's actually it's creamier it's got more it's got more vanilla and it's creamier and it's kind of it's a different whiskey with water with the nose anyway i'd say there's a little bit more depth to the nose but it's different flavors it's more of a vanilla now than than a than having that jam jam thing going on it's less less jammy and more about the the older age bourbon cask kind of uh whiskey that's what it kind of smells like now and that's delightful, don't get me wrong. But I prefer the jam. I just prefer the jam. Ooh. Okay. Wow, okay. Again, full of surprises. The palette is fantastic and more explosive. And on that first half swallow, I had a massive backward explosion of fruit fly forward. I thought initially I was lost, I'd lost the fruit. I, I thought initially this has just gone to like a standardy bourbon-y kind of dram. Very beautiful, but still, less interesting and then i got that i don't want to call it reflux because that's not the correct descriptor but it felt like a reflux it wasn't a reflux i didn't burp it back up um but it was it is definitely uh, it's definitely a uh, stop saying regurgitation in your head it was a it was a recurrence of um of of uh a fruit explosion it's really good stuff this is mm. It definitely does a lot more as it hits the back of your tongue. It's difficult to get it to the back of your tongue without swallowing it. That's what she said. But the um, the um, the it's really nice. <laughs> oh dear, sorry. Maybe. Yeah. I'm not pushed already. You've really got to work to get this at the back of the tongue because um that's where the magic happens it's fantastic stuff hats off and all the rest of it fantastic stuff well worth it great really good stuff um i can't say any more than that it's bloody lovely man crack on right more to do Lockdown week three. See you in the next one.